Fun fact for today, autocorrect changed psychonic to demonic in all of my notes. Hey, I'm Scott and welcome to my channel. And if you're new here, thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing. We do all kinds of unboxing, tests, tutorials, reviews, anything photo and video related. So if you like the content, please also consider hitting that little bell icon when you subscribe to make sure you get notifications of new content in the future. So I've been using the Seikonic C800 for about two or three months now. And at first I intended to do a review of it, but honestly, there's really not much to actually review. It's not like there's a ton of different options or a lot of companies in the market for something like this and what it does it does and it just does it well on top of that if you're already deep in the development or the testing side of things you probably already have one of these or something similar and you know it's what you need anyway so while I will make a separate video to show a complete walkthrough of the interface and everything that's built into here for people kind of considering which model they want to get today's video is just going to be focused on people who are new to this just a little more about what it does how it does it and why it's important, you know, why you might consider getting one. So let's get into it. Before wasting your time, be aware that something like this is expensive. The C800, which I have here, cost about $1,600. Of course, they do have older models for a little bit cheaper with less features built in, but there's a lot of tech in here. I mean, there's an actual sensor in here, so that price is justifiable for the technology that's built into it. But of course, that's gonna be hard or even impractical for a lot of casual videographers to buy. However, as you work your way up as an indie filmmaker, a a commercial videographer or even a full-time youtuber something like this is going to have more and more benefit in your workflow and you might want to consider something like a group buy you know if you have uh, some friends or a team or even videographers in your area that want to pitch in and kind of group buy it together that way you could all share the benefits that you get from it without having to swallow that really big pill that is the $1,600 price tag Anyway, if the price is a bit much for you, then I thought that might be something worth considering. So what this does may be obvious from the name, it measures the quality of light from either continuous lighting or from flash. But why does that matter? The main thing that I was wondering was while so many manufacturers will report their CRI ratings or the TLCI ratings, how much more value on top of that could this bring me? Well, what you might expect is that in terms of measuring light quality, the C800 goes way deeper than what those manufacturers will tell you. The CRI value that most manufacturers will tell you is just the average of eight tested colors, and none of those even represent skin tone. The C800 will test 15 values for CRI, including the R9 red value, which is important for skin tone, but it's hard for LED lights to reproduce. An otherwise decently rated light could score terribly in that color for representing nice skin tones and that's definitely not a light you would want to choose for an interview key light or even for your YouTube videos even if it might be okay in some other situations. Naturally if it's lacking some other color that's also not tested by that CRI reported by manufacturers that's not a light you would want to use in certain situations. It's not going to be good if you come back to your client with a video of his product that doesn't look like it should. Of course CRI as a rating overall even with the extended 15 sample test that the C800 does leaves a lot of of gaps in between those testing colors so even if it scores high on that there may be a lot missing in between so it might not be a nice smooth full spectrum of light side note this is all independent of color temperature meaning even if you have the color temperature on your camera and your light set correctly, it still may not produce all of the colors the way they're supposed to be reproduced. This is a lot more tricky to correct for in post compared to just simple color temperature adjustments. So TLCI is another rating that's very similar to CRI in that it tests a number of color samples, but the only difference is that TLCI will test how they're reproduced by a certain collection of broadcast cameras instead of how they appear to the eye it may more accurately represent how certain cameras will accurately reproduce colors when combined with certain lights, but the number of cameras that are included in that test or that rating are limited and they're mostly broadcast style cameras which are different from modern cinema cameras or DSLRs with single chip sensors. So the C800 also includes more in-depth readings like TM30 or SSI. TM30, for example, tests 99 color samples instead of just the 8 or the 15 of the extended CRI, which means that even though it's not a complete smooth spectrum testing, 
if it's tested well in those 99 samples, there's a much higher chance that means that your light overall is going to be putting out a full, smooth, nice spectrum of light. SSI, on the other hand, will actually mathematically report how accurately the curve of the spectrum of your light matches a theoretically perfect source like the sun. So instead of telling you how accurately it reproduces a limited number of sample colors, it will tell you how close to perfect that light actually is. And that's why it's quickly becoming one of the more popular ways of testing the quality of a light's output. Of course, producing a high score in SSI is a lot more difficult. Even perfect sources like the sun itself don't produce perfect 100 scores in this because environmental factors and things like that. But from what I've seen, good LEDs tend to score somewhere in the mid 70s to the 80s. Anyway, knowing in detail how your light performs can be really important when you're doing work that's color critical, which is to say anything more than just casual videography. Of course, making sure that you light people with a light that produces good skin tones, but also that you light products that have a certain color with a light that will actually reproduce that color accurately. Once again, your client won't be happy if you come back to them with a video of a product that doesn't have that product's real true to life color in it. And if you take that into post and try to force those colors, it's gonna be a lot more time consuming, a lot more difficult, and probably a lot less quality of a final product. Another thing that I've really loved about the C800 is that it can tell me exactly the color temperature that my light is outputting, as well as the green or magenta shift. Whether or not it's a bi-color light, I found that in a lot of cases, the actual reading, the display of the color temperature on the light does not perfectly match what it's actually putting out. Sometimes, of course, it's definitely gonna be closer than others, but uh, when you put the light down on lower power, especially on bi-color lights or with cheaper LEDs is where you're gonna start to see differences. And I've seen differences from the actual reading to the real color temperature up to 500, 600 Kelvin, and even more in some cases. On top of that, when you're mixing multiple lights, even a minimal magenta shift mixed with a minimal green shift will really look terrible in the end product. Once again, that's gonna be something that's tricky to fix in post, and I would really much rather know about those things before I start recording. You can use gels to correct for that or to match different lights on set so that way everything is equal at least. And some lights even have a dial on there where you can dial in the green and magenta shift. So it's only going to take seconds to fix this problem before you start recording where it would take a lot, lot more time afterwards. Being able to make sure that I'm mixing lights that have the same color temperature, the actual output, not just what it says on the display, or the same green and magenta shift with each other, or you know, matching the existing ambient light has been a huge help in not having to rely on that display to trust that my lights are gonna be putting out what they say they're gonna be putting out on top of that, the C800 can actually give you specific exact recommendations of which filters to use to correct for whatever issues you're finding with your lights, which is great if you have those filters on hand or have access to them so that way you can get them and you know correct those lights that have some certain issues and just use them with a lot more confidence. If you do decide to share the C800 with some friends or with your team or with other filmmakers in the area, then I would recommend you just test all of your lights and you can either save the actual data onto your computer, the, the chart, of exactly all of the different test results for your light and then you can print that out or you can make some notes and just stick it onto the control box or the side of the LED so that way wherever you go you know exactly how each of your lights behaves and you can really make sure that you're using them correctly. If you want to try and save some money there are tons of cheap LEDs on the market but of course it's a little bit risky. Some of them are surprisingly good but some of them are absolutely terrible so if you want to save money and go out and get some cheap LEDs you can bring them home, test them and make sure that they perform how they should and if they don't just return them so you can get those cheap LEDs save money but still be confident that what you're getting is going to be able to put out enough quality that you can use them and not have terrible results so overall for me the C800 just takes the uncertainty out of color I know my skin tones will be there I know my product colors will be accurate and I know that when I mix lights I'm gonna be mixing them the way they should be mixed and I'll have the correct color temperature and I don't have to worry about any green or magenta shifts the only variable that's left is up to me Yes, I know it's expensive, but there's a lot of tech built into there and the things that it can tell me are things that I can now know in a matter of seconds with absolute certainty and that takes a ton of stress and frustration out of the job and potentially a lot of time trying to fix things in post. 
if you have it in your budget, it's definitely worth the money, both in terms of the actual quality and the quality of the results. And, you know, Seikonic can't be beat in terms of that, as well as the interface, the display, the way that things work. It's really, really simple and easy to figure out. Again, there is a lot to it, though. There's a lot built into here. So I will have a separate video dedicated to a walkthrough of the actual interface and everything that's included. So if you want to see that when it's ready, I will put a link on screen somewhere and down in the video description. So check that as well. Otherwise, to see more details about the C800 itself, check the link for that down there as well. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to see more in the future. And as always, thank you for watching.